What if you want to have some new colors, but you don't want to spend a lot of money buying more tubes? That's what we're going to do today. Let's get started. So what I did was I found a school of artists that I really like. This is the Cape Cod School of Art, and this is just one detail from a painting from that uh, group. These are colors that I don't usually use. These aren't colors that you necessarily see a lot in Vermont. What I did was I chose some colors from that painting and mixed them up. And now I knew I wouldn't be able to remember the recipes, so um, I wrote in pencil next to the colors. I didn't pick all the colors in the paintings, just enough darks, mediums, and lights to be able to hopefully fulfill my task. And now we're going to get started on that. So I have that frame of reference nearby. Those are the colors that I'm allowed to use. And I'm going to plug those colors into this uh, still life that I have. And I did the still life with a different artist painting uh, using someone else's colors a few days ago. So you can, that was, that'll be the video before this one if you want to take a look at that. But I love the soft light of the Cape Cod School of Painters. And I also think it's very interesting when you want to have a lot of colors, instead of buying them, uh, mix the colors you want. But, you know, when you paint for a long period of time, you just kind of get in this thing where you just keep using the same colors over and over again. And there isn't a lot of variety in your work. So that's what I'm doing here. I want to see if I can create different paintings this year than I did last year. And I feel pretty good about most of my skills, but one of the things I've gotten into kind of rut about is the color choices that I make. So here are some mixes that I don't usually have. But again, you know, you can buy a million tubes of paint, or you can learn how to mix paint better. And so that's what I did here. And you can kind of see the recipe in those uh, right next to the little uh, square dabs that I made. Uh, you can see that there, there was no way I was going to remember these color mixes because they're not automatic to me yet, but maybe they will be over time. And I didn't hit them all perfectly at all. You know, I, these were just the ones that I saved. Now I'm doing what I usually do, finding my lights, mediums, and darks, and I'm plugging my lights, mediums, and darks into the color squares that I already had. So I'm just uh, not matching to the photograph, but matching shape to value. That's what I'm doing here, using as few strokes as possible. And I did pick kind of a small brush. I think that might only be a 16 or 14 which is not what I usually do, but I, I wanted to slow myself down. Sometimes a small brush will slow me down, and I think I wanted to purposely do that because I knew, I kind of knew I didn't have really good concentration today, and I didn't know if this would work or not. I think in the end it does work. I think I want to try it again. I think uh, there is, um, one thing I noticed about the painting that I was working from in terms of the colors was there are certain places where there's really high intensity of color and thickness and other places where it's quite muted, which I think I did, but like anything else you do the first time, I suspect I could do better with the second try. Uh, you'll also see in some places, lots of times what I'm doing is a little bit of triad work. I put in some, oh, it's like a rose and a blue shadow there, and I put a little bit of orange in just to soften that up a little bit. And we've talked about that in lots of other videos. Just always having color chords or triads work for you if you can. I felt a little bit freer to do that this time because I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with some of these mixes and going outside my comfort zone. I like the brightness of the color that is provided by this, the, the, the painting that inspired me. And, and I think I would like to do a, a few others like this. Um, but I'm going to definitely try to see if I can get the paint to be thicker. I accomplished getting over the thickness of paint in this case by using a, a couple of layers, but I don't really like to do that. If I can hit something the first time through, then, then I'm going to try to do that. So these are all the colors that I usually have on my palette. The only difference is that I'm mixing them in different ways than I normally would. And so, of course, you have a different result. But I don't have to buy tubes of paint. What I have to do is just learn how to mix different combinations of paint in order to get the, um, the effect that I want to get. And in the end, I kind of think I did, which is exciting to me. 
because like I said, I don't want to paint the same paintings a year from now that I paint now. I like this little pass there where there's some red going in the background and then some green, which is popping up around the outside of that apple. I think that's making that apple move forward a little bit. And now there are some neutrals. I'm not so sure those are the same neutrals that were in the stimulus painting. I can't, I can't be sure. You know, one thing I start out with always with really good intentions, but then, um, eh, yeah, my concentration only goes for so long and then I will start to go a little bit rogue. But I, I, I think I, I think I did, I did, I did pretty well today. I did pretty well staying, um, in terms of the strategy plan, but I would like to try again tomorrow because, um, I do like this particular, um, bunch of colors and the softness that they have almost a little bit like um, pastels, a little bit like a, you would think like springtime, almost Easter or holiday kind of colors. There's not a lot of harshness going on here, and I think I respond to that. There were a couple places in the stimulus painting where it, there was really, really bright color. Almost it looked like the artist took it right out of the tube, and so that's what I was trying to do here. But I don't want to do too much of that. I saw they did, the, the artist, the original artist did very little of it, and so I thought to myself, well, don't overdo it. Try to learn from the master, and, and that 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 uh, that person was much more masterful than I am. So don't reinvent the wheel. Just see if you can apply what you see happening there to what you want to do in your own painting. What I did then after doing this, uh, what do you call it? video? It's not a video, is it? But uh, movie, iMovie. <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, I did I, what I always do, which is walk away, take a look back, and just feel like there are a couple of final adjustments. And you, I'm not even sure you can tell the final adjustments right here, but you saw the bare bones of what needs to be done here. So don't buy a lot of tubes of paint, but look at someone else's painting and see if you can mix some of the colors that they have there and work with their color scheme and see how that changes your work. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, ask for value, mix for color. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye bye.